Hey everybody, it's Jamie and Danny, and this is another Harn Collective video production. Yep, we are here today. This is day two, and we're gonna do this video intro. Um, we recorded some stuff earlier tonight that we'll share, but we're trying some different lighting, and it is kind of bright here. But the more light you have during video recording, the better. And so Danny is um, taking protection, as we all should be in these days of Corona. Um, so yeah, so today we're going to talk about how to survive house arrest. Right. And um, so yeah, so the, the footage that follows will be, and we may intersperse some more of these cute little video interludes. It kind of gives you a chance to see we're still alive. Yeah. And uh, healthy and happy. Um <laughs> So, babe. Yes. What do we need to know about how to survive on house arrest? <laughs> how to do this without busting up laughing? Uh, the house arrest is interesting. It's it's a very uh, layered topic. That's what I would say about house arrest at this point. All right. Have fun, guys. If you're a first time offender or something minor, you'll get probation. That's your layer. And for six months, you can't. That meant you can't screw up again. Right. Months. I was on probation. That, that's your but now my record's clean and lucky. The, as your difficulties, as the difficulty level increases in the game, <laughs> what happens is the penalty, the the, the, the quantity the, of restriction is The increased. consequences increase. Yeah. The level of And it's usually in levels of restriction. Right. Because that's all we can do now is lock people now down. Now you're a repeat offender. So, you know, you got a DUI. Well, we're taking your driver's license away, and we're putting this interlock on your car, and you're going to pay for that to be installed. Oh, you're dude, pay yeah. this much a month. And you can only be at home or at work, and you have to jump through all these hoops. $15,000 later. Just to make a paycheck so you can pay us for your mistakes, for your choices. Right. Then there's other levels. You know, you may have an ankle bracelet, some new jewelry that you get to wear. For Yay! Decorate it. And with that, there's <laughs> you can only go so far. You can't go. You may not be able to make it to the mailbox. I can still feed the chickadees. Yeah, I, I probably couldn't make it to the mailbox. the mailbox. Depends on what what you're doing. They'd probably set you up so you could get to the mailbox. Right. And this game is no different. It's going to be played the same way. And right now, they're asking us to slow down, quit running around. Quit bumping into each other. Yeah, because that's what that's spreads what the disease. Us to do. As Americans, the children that we are on this planet, we're the stubborn teenagers, and we're some of us are just going to keep doing it. And it's that's not a slash on millennials. No, it's some absolutely of, a lot of, of the millennials are doing the right thing. They've been doing this for years. I mean, dude, I I had the thought myself of. Man, I always said when this day came, I was just going to pack up the car and go to Key West. Maybe I should. Right. I've had that thought. Yeah. That serious thought. Mm -hmm. I've ran it through my head and played around with it for a while these past few weeks at different well, points in time. You had a little trigger to think of that thought, too. Right. So. You know, for whatever reason. I wish they'd just done that. <laughs> and, and we all kind of have those those moments where, okay... Run for the border. If, if this is the end, well, I should fly to Iceland. Where do I want to die? That's where I'm going. <laughs> and, and just because you have that thought doesn't mean you're crazy or you're losing it. It means you're human. Right. That's all. We're all processing this thing. And, and we got to talk to each other about the thoughts and the things that are running around our little brains. Well, and I think it's really difficult because, like, you know, I feel, I feel like I've kind of been scolding the those in my life who are in the older generation like my parents age um and i it feels uncomfortable um and i and it also does not always come across really good because it's kind of based in utter terror for their lives mm -hmm. so yeah i mean that's the kind of stuff that we're balancing you know if you find yourself Incarcerated is one word to use for it. <laughs> uh, isolated. We're using isolated. the word isolated. It's severely restricted. Um, when you're in that situation for a length of time, a letter, like 
for me, it was a long time ago, and letters were valuable. That right. Was like gold. That was communication from the outside world. What we've already found is, you know, we have the technology here. And this is where the millennials are our greatest asset, is teaching all us old farts how to do stuff. Be nice to We them. have the ability to have open mics back and forth between multiple households all at one time. Like we're all hanging out at a house party. I mean, you can all, you can sky, fate, you know, all kinds of technology to help us communicate. So even though we're isolated, we're not alone. Yeah. Who's going to, you know, if you piss them off, they're not going to help you fix your Wi-Fi. If you need your Wi-Fi right now, think about it. Yeah. Yeah, Wi-Fi is like our lifeline right now. Gives like, you if, a, or the phone. If your we could go back to the phone. gives you the blue screen of death, who you going to call? Yeah. Oh, we had a, yeah, we had someone tell us that today. That was not good. And that's and, being a good shelter buddy. You, you've got to be nice to all the other shelter buddies out there. Just because they're not living with you in their shelter doesn't mean they're not a shelter buddy. Yeah, that's We're true. We're all shelter buddies right now. Yeah. I know we talked yesterday how I was, you know, how people are concerned about me being angry. And I just talked a little bit about how the messaging cannot come across in a good way. Um or at least it may not land as it was intended, or it may, it may in fact be really harsh. And I will admit that I have had some harsh things to say to a couple of people. Um, I, in general, I am pretty much no sugar coat. You know, people I, who know me know that they know I'm no bullshit. I'm like, just, I'm going to say how it is. I'm not going to try to pretend it's something it's not. I have, I have been actually pulling punches and I think, you know, as things become clearer, people will see that I am pulling punches and I am, uh, yeah, in, in the end, I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to feel like I di still didn't warn far enough uh, and make enough of an impact. So. Yeah, and I want to backtrack a little, too, because you brought up yesterday. and Yesterday was a really rough day for us here. And we've talked about it a little bit, a little bit in other videos and things and with, with other friends and cohorts and shelter buddies. Right. Somewhat. Um, but not but, in a lot of well, detail. We, with, with a couple of people we did. We, we both need to comprehend that yesterday was day 10 for us of lockdown here. We, we haven't left that. We went outside. We walked to the mailbox. We haven't driven off the property. For 10 days, day, day 11 now. But yesterday was day 10. That's 2,400 hours. <gasps> Ooh, that's a lot of time. Yeah. That's 2,400 hours spent with one other human being in less than 1,000 square feet. It's not 2,400. It's 240. <laughs> I tried to make it sound magnetic. Dang it! <laughs> But still, 240 yeah. is a lot of hours, dude. So, and based on that, it's only 240 Now hours. don't you feel better? Doesn't it feel better now? <laughs> 2,400 feels much better than only 240 hours. It feels like 2,400 maybe. Yeah. But, yeah, I do think that... that That's where exponentiality comes in. <laughs> Gosh, the number crunching has been phenomenal and sometimes you know the the problem is sometimes you you run these and you're like oh yeah and then you're like no way that could be right and it's like oh shit it is right oh my god and chris uh martinson chris martinson at peak prosperity on youtube you should check him out seriously resource for accurate data yeah he's a real no bullshit guy um he I totally, shows you the sources he gives it to you real and does what you do with it what you choose so um yeah so day 11 today and um we'll i mean really i think what we are talking a lot about is still just the communications and how you live with people in a way that is effective um and it really depends on who you're talking to and what stage of um, awareness they are about what we are facing um, this is as we talked about yesterday a really complex 
crazy issue. Uh, none of us has any idea what the future holds at present. I mean, we're talking about the possibility that everything as we know it in life today is going to be completely and utterly different in ways that we just can't even imagine, potentially. It could be this thing burns through and everything's great. But I kind of like thinking about the ways that we could change things for the better, especially as we see our federal government fail us left and right and the corruption that is being revealed amongst our uh, representatives. Um, it's just, it's really appalling. I, I was very impressed, just to give you a bit of good news, if you live in Minnesota and you're listening to this, um, Governor Walls and his team has um, given us a lot of hope today. They had a press conference. We, we specifically wanted to join it and hear what he had to say as he said it to see if it was bullshit or if it was a cover up like we've been seeing from the federal government. And um, boy, were we impressed. Um, they, they really they were very, very good about making clear that their priority is transitioning everything we possibly can to start manufacturing the things that we absolutely need for the health care of our citizens and with a primary focus on making sure we feed all our citizens. I was impressed that um, the governor uh, spoke specifically to the difference in health care systems for our indigenous neighbors and um, I think thought he kind of just basically called it a bunch of bullshit um, in so many nice words because, you know, that's his job. And um, I'm really hopeful that we will will see a, a really strong response in Minnesota. There's a lot of really – maybe we'll do a deeper dive on that or maybe I'll write a blog about it. But there's a whole lot that's going on in this, um, in this administration right now. Unfortunately, I also noticed an email from uh, Representative – or Senator Utke, um, Senator Paul Utke in Minnesota, um, who's a total um, just ignoramus. I mean – I don't want to believe he's an evil person, but I, I'm hopeful he's just ignorant and not evil because what he is calling for is basically to, in a state of emergency in Minnesota, he is calling for people to tell the governor that he is doing too much. Uh, when we hear cries from around the world that, um, and, and video out of Italy today has been form. I guess it's actually, I think it was a couple of days old, but anyways, we, I've been sending it around today on Facebook where they're literally telling us like, you guys need to get prepared. Like you've never been prepared before. Um, please listen to us, learn from our lesson. Don't let our people be dying in vain. Let us help you. I mean, that's what we're hearing from countries around the world. We cannot do enough and we cannot do it fast enough. Um, and, and that includes and, locking down our people in house arrests. <laughs> and unfortunately, that's fallen to each state. So your, your governor is going to decide what happens in your state. That, that's your reigning authority. And below that for us here, we've got the county commissioners, five old guys that may or may not make it through this. Five old white guys. Or may or may risk. not even know this is happening. Or, yeah. But our main guy here is Darren Halverson, our county sheriff. That's who's going to be taking care of us because we live out here in the county. And he's a decent guy. Yeah. I trust him. Yeah, he's I'm a nice I'm going to give him a shot. I believe he understands if he handles this successfully. It could be it's big his career. leader. Yeah, I think that's the thing that we need to be talking about is the leaders who We're are stepping up. The leaders who are stepping up right now, you know, yeah. just like we were super impressed on this line three fight with Matt Sherger from the Public Utilities Commission standing up against the bullshit of the oil industry and recognizing the risks of climate change. We are going to see leaders right now who are like Donald Trump, uh, just totally like washing his hands of this until he can't do it anymore and he has made all the money he could possibly make out of the stock market or fucked it up as bad as he could, whatever. And now all of a sudden he knew all along and he's called this a pandemic before anybody and all the other bullshit that's spewing out of his mouth. I mean, that's what we are seeing in our leadership right now. And it's, it's horrifying. Um, but we're also seeing people like what Governor Walls has done today and his team. And we're seeing this, it, it sounds like this council of governors, which is a group of people who are going to make a difference for us and jump into place. And we're going to see other leaders that just don't make the cut. I mean, you're going to see leaders that are going to encourage things that are totally, totally 
not good. Um, one prime example is Spanish flu, 1918. During the pandemic, when people were being quarantined, the city of Philadelphia had a parade. They had a big celebration. A lot of people came up. But people will make bad calls. They'll encourage bad behaviors. They'll overlook bad behaviors. It's often. I mean, it's like up here. You know, our our county is a what Second Amendment sanctuary. That was some knee jerk reaction <clears throat> a couple months ago. Well, those and, things happen, and, and, and we and do And some the best. of that, some of that's done out of some of that's done out of um, you know loyalty to the Constitution or your NRA or whatever. But some of that is done out of fear. And a lot of what we're seeing now that's that's really the wrong kind of behavior is is done out of fear and is often done in um, with humor and it's really really sad. Um, Kids dressing up in hazmat suits and running around Walmart because they think it's fun, not really realizing those five suits with masks, gloves, booties, everything could have been used at the hospital. Right. And and those are the kind of lessons that, that we all are learning as humans. And I mean, ugh, you know, I've made plenty of mistakes in my life. And and I think that's part of what drives me wanting to be informed and is and erring on the side of caution, if I can, in this, which looks to be a very grave uh, situation that we're, we're if, facing. You know, if you can voluntarily place yourself on some level of house arrest. It's it's not bad. We've got board games. We've been playing backgammon. We've done all kinds of oh, different we should activities. Do that again tonight. And yeah, I mean, go out in your yard and feed some chickadees and live stream it. I'd love to see call more of that. Yeah, call a friend that you haven't heard from in a long time. Gosh, we talked to a dude today that we Facebook message every once in a while, but it, that's only been in the last couple of years. And then, um, but we hadn't talked to him in probably fifteen years. Yeah. Not longer. And it was so fun to just, you know, it's just like you're back with your old buddy and You got time to time. read a book, the ability to take a nap when you want to without huge consequences, hopefully. And I think that's a really and, and good. keep in mind, please keep in mind the people that don't have these luxuries. Right. You know, especially our, our grocery store people. My God, they're on the front lines right yeah. there with the healthcare workers. Right. Doing everything they can to help keep us alive. Be nice to them. Be yeah. kind to They're them. Pretty amazing people, all of them. Appreciate their hard work and, and their dedication. And the people we're dealing with right now, <laughs> everybody's stressed. Everybody's overworked. Yeah. Everybody's on some level of house arrest. And believe me, until that day of freedom, it sucks. Well, right now, we don't have a. It's like when you're waiting for trial, and until trial, you don't have a release date. <laughs> You know, up until that time, oh, it's somewhere between this many and that many days. That's right. all you know, and that's where I'm at right now. I don't know how many days. I, I'm figuring I can do 181 days. That's about six months. I know I can do that. Worst yeah, case. Yeah, well. This but is, I don't think I'm going to have to. I think I'm going to do like a 90-day, and then I'll get out for a month or two and do something stupid, and then I'll go back and lock down <laughs> for, you know, maybe another 14 or 21 days. I think it's going to be like that. I'll be a repeat offender for a while with this. Yeah, I think there's so much that we don't still know, but what we do know, uh, we should um, we should really take to heart um, and uh, make sure that we are trying to be as safe as we can. There's some we did mention peak prosperity. There's some really good. Um, he also talks about the importance of being able to communicate with each other. Um, you know, there's a lot. I think that for us is really the biggest thing right now. You know, even yesterday when it was World War Three from the get go and I drug Danny out of bed at an ungodly hour, especially because we usually don't go to bed till very late. It's like nine in the morning. Oh, my God. He was not um, going back to bed, though, because it was serious. We were we were we were just dove right in. And, you know, and the thing is, it's like, you know, and, and at one point it's like. I just knew I really needed to hug him, and I really didn't want to, but I right. did, you know? And, and you, like, think, you think you know where your shelter buddy's at with stuff, but really... Sometimes a word can trigger yeah. them to realize, like, oh, shit, I hadn't thought of that. Or, 
um, you know, we, we can have sudden realizations. We see something on the news. We think of someone we love. We, whatever the heck it is that's like, oh man. But then you, it's a big deal to, to that person and your shelter buddy's like, oh yeah, I thought of that a week ago. And then you're just like, well, why didn't you tell me? <laughs> well, and I, I do think that some of that is, um, we need to come to it at our own speed. But I do think that if your shelter buddy is asking you like, Hey, where are you at with this stuff? I, I do think it's good. And I know you've said to me, like, I, there's a lot of things I've thought of that I'm not sure you're thinking of. And I'm like, okay, well start feeding them to me. So, you know, kind of start but, out slow and feed those, me what you're thinking. A lot of those things really they're It's all speculation they're within the realm of possibility. That doesn't mean they're ever going to be a reality. Right, yeah. and that's I think the biggest part of the problem. That's the is, hardest. There's so many variables, there's so many unknowns at this point in this game. Well, and you, because of your military background, and me, because of my engineering background, both. Anytime we have a problem, all our brain does is just process Look constantly, solutions. looking for solutions. How yeah. do we get out? What's the best way out? How do we get the machine going again? Right. Where's our exits? Yeah. Yeah. What do we need to prepare for? And, and man, those, those, we're getting information. We got valuable information from Governor Walls today. I'm very grateful for that. It helps me feel better. There's a plan. He's working with FEMA. We're FEMA Region Five. The Region Five administrator is some dude out of Chicago that's got a great resume. So we got a good team in place here. I'm comfortable with that. Know what your FEMA region is. Take a look at it online. What's the structure? As, as we put, come out of this, the governors are going to be working with FEMA and the National Guard, and that's who's going to pull us out of this. Yeah, your the, local government. Be up feeding places and medical places. This will all be part of the DOD plan, and it's going to take time for it all to come together. Right. If you look at the East Coast and the West Coast, you'll see the things we'll, we'll that watch. we're going to be seeing in a few weeks. We're yeah. a few weeks behind the coasts, but it's going to be coming here to the Midwest. Chicago will be a few days ahead of I'm us. I'm sorry if you're on the coasts already. Sorry. we got a lot of friends on those. but Just like the spread, Chicago will be a few days ahead of us when it comes through there, and you'll get a feel for what's coming. The nice part is we get to see that occur. And as it occurs, it's, as it's moving our direction across the nation, you know, from both co coasts, actually. And from the center now with Chicago. But as that happens, we're learning every day. We're, we're learning best practices. We're learning the most efficient way to do things. Yeah, and keep, we're going to keep and we're, doing... And we're good with that stuff as, as a species. Yeah, we're going to keep doing these little chats. We'll wrap it up for tonight, but... Um, if there's things that you want to hear about, call us, let us know, talk to us. Or if there's things you want to talk about that you're like, you want to tell us we're crazy, call us, tell us why we're crazy. You want to, yep. um, you know, figure out why we think what we think. We're glad to tell you where we're getting our information in. Um, yeah. Oh, and tomorrow morning we're doing a watch party thing on YouTube. Yeah. We're doing our first, um, online funeral. And it's um, a, good a very Sean good Olson, friend, Sean, Sean Olson. His mother Kay passed just as this thing was um, Dude, she coming. Snuck, snuck out the back door in the middle of the night. She did, boy. She got out under the wire. And, um, you know, Kay and Sean and Angie, you know, on Facebook mostly, but that family, when you went in their house, it was just like love all around and everyone was yep. welcome and. All, Everyone was family, and Jamie you know, used to make popcorn and take it to her. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's like I think that these are the things that we need to keep trying to do. Come to the come, if you if you're from that. I, I don't know how many people from our old place are listening, but man, if you've got someone in your area who's doing an online funeral, go attend. You know, be Bring a part of community. View it as a group. Yeah, be a part of community as best you can. We're all going to need each other as we walk through these times. And and um, I am just uber grateful to Sean for Set up a watch setting this up because it was it's, – it's hard enough when you know you can't be there with the people you love. But if you can be there in some small way, it really helps lessen the, lessen the blow. So anyways, be kind to each other. Yep. And – Help case set a trend tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> right. We're going to need a lot of new online ways, and, and that's going to be our new economy, I think. So 
let's uh, be nice to our uh, local millennials and uh, hope that they will take care of That's us. That's tech service. That's right. So. Cheers to tech service. Love each other. Be kind. Drink water. <laughs>